Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. For the purposes of today's video, I am not going to make any announcements. This is going to be a very lengthy video, and so I make no apology for that. In fact, as I was going over the material, because it is going to be three prophecies into one, three prophecies integrated into one, as I was going over all this material that the Lord has given me today and told me to bring back old prophecies and read them in the hearing of the people who come to this blog, wherever you are watching or listening from, I was trying to figure out how I was going to do it. And he said to me, if the video ends up being two hours long, then so be it. And I've always said that that people have the time to watch the Avengers, that people have the time to watch Marvel superhero universe that takes two and a half hours. They have the time to go and sit and watch Wakanda and watch Avatar for nearly three hours of their life. But when it comes time to sit in the presence of the Lord and listen to things that are going to affect every living soul here in the United States of America, well then sometimes some of us are too busy but others of us are able to give over the time. And so there's no announcements except perhaps that one. This is a lengthy prophecy. This is a grave prophecy. It starts off looking at the socioeconomic situation of America. What do Americans expect? What are Americans used to? And how is that going to change in the future? Is it going to change in the future positively? Are we simply going a slump, going through a slump now in America? A slump that as soon as the experts get together and the people at the Fed get together and the people who are up front in the driver's seat at the White House get together and in Congress and in the House and the lawmakers, is it simply a situation whereby we're going through a rough patch right now, but if we push our congressmen and push the reps and push the president, then things are going to turn around for the better? The Lord God says, decidedly not. America is going to go exactly where God says she's going to go, and that is into a full-blown financial crisis. And one of the visions that I saw today, it was just a, just a very brief one that came as the Lord was saying something about the fact that he will tear the net that is called money. One of the visions that I saw, just a brief flash, was of a huge slash that came in a very wide net. So it was a very wide net, and that net was called money. And a massive slash opened up in the net from the close end all the way to the other end. So a gash came into that net. And so many people fell through into the abyss that was under that net. The only thing that I saw was that a few people on this side and that side, when the net broke and swung open, there were people clinging on and clinging on to both sides of the net, and they were looking into the hole. And those were a particular type of person. It's not just anyone. It was a particular type of person. And so when we get there, we will get there. The title of today's prophecy, Bless the Name of Jesus Christ, is called They Will Have Nothing. I received this prophecy as soon as I opened my eyes today, July the 14th, 2023. So I was sleeping, and as soon as I opened my eyes, God started talking. From the minute I gained consciousness, he started talking. And this that I'm going to read is what the Lord said. This is not a thought, debate, anything. This is what God said. When the word you is used, he is speaking to this nation the United States. And under that umbrella, people are going to have to listen very well and find wherever they fit. Thus says the Lord to the nation of America, you will have nothing. You work jobs now that pay the rent and put food on the table, but all that is coming to an end. In the future, you will not have jobs at all. The economy will be corrupted and destroyed. The decay is already visible in it, and it's going to get worse. Mass unemployment in America, no jobs, no industries, no money in circulation. Everything will be shut down. It will all be silent as people are wailing for their daily bread, and the government has no solution to the problem. 
So this is part one. I've spoken of the fact that we're going to go into severe economic straits, dire economic straits in the United States. And I've been speaking about this almost since I started the blog, that I've seen that America would go into a terrible time of decline, that there would be no money circulating in the country, that the economy was going to shrink, that money was going to lose 60% of its value, and that people in America would begin to struggle and I saw the prophecy is called money down the drain. And I think that prophecy is from 2018. I saw that there was a huge schism. A schism is a split where your mind is facing two realities and your mind cannot make those two realities work together. And so the mind, the poor mind is under so much pressure that it suffers a split because that's the only way it can deal with two realities that don't gel up. I saw that when that time comes, the government swung into practice and well-oiled propaganda. They began to tell us on the radio, on social media, in print media, billboards, wherever they could reach people. They began to tell us that America is the greatest country in the world, that America is only suffering a momentary setback, that America is not going through any problem that is too hard for Americans to fix. We were going to build back better. We were going to make America strong again. We were going to come back stronger than ever off the back of this crisis. That's what they told us on one hand. And I saw that at that time, the government was extremely vicious towards anyone who said the opposite. It didn't matter if that person was on the news. It didn't matter if that person was just a social media influencer. It didn't matter if that person was someone who was well trusted on maybe a financial service or a financial speculator. If anyone was speaking contrary to what the government was telling us at that time that person was in danger of being charged with sedition that person was seen as public enemy number one that person was seen as an enemy of the state that person was seen as someone who was directly opposed to the government's agenda and that person was in danger on the other hand the reality that we were facing was that we could not put food on the table as far back as 2018 and even further back, I saw that in this country, people were unable to pay the bills. People had to let go of luxuries and the luxuries included certain food items. I spoke of those food items in the prophecy called a vision of America. And that prophecy came in 2021. People had to decide if they were going to pay on the mortgage this month or pay the car note this month. They could not handle both payments. So they were trying to juggle life like that. Do we still send the kids to college? Can we still afford this school? Life was so difficult here. And what made it worse? is that we saw the reality in our purses and our wallets and our bank statements. We saw the reality that the money was under severe economic straits, but the schism was being caused by the messaging that we were receiving. The messaging was telling us you're okay. You're fine. America is too strong for you to be poor. But in that prophecy, Americans were poor and getting poorer by the month. No solution was coming except the propaganda lie that we were being given. And now God is saying now, many years after 2021, many years after 2018, when those first prophecies came, he said definitively that people in America will have nothing. It is very hard to misunderstand nothing. Nothing means the absence of everything, not the absence of just luxuries or the absence of some stuff. It means that absolutely nothing that you want or nothing that you wish to have will you have. He says the jobs that people are working now can pay the rent and put food on the table. And in one of the prophecies that I brought, I think either earlier this year when I was handling financial prophecies, God said that you complain about your jobs now and you complain about the fact that you have to work two jobs and you come home tired. But in the future, yes, the prophecy is called two more good years. In the future, when you lose both those jobs and you enter into that painful reality called unemployment, he said you will miss the fact that you had to wake up so early to hit the first job and had to work so late to complete the second job. You will miss having two, three jobs because those two, three jobs were doing the job of paying the rent and putting food on the table and taking care of you and your family. But when those jobs are swallowed into the economic black hole, that is coming. The prophecy is called worse than 2008. 
And 2008 is probably one of the worst things that we have on record, except 1933. Well, God says that it's going to be worse than 2008. The jobs are going to absolutely disappear. I brought the prophecy in 2022 where I said that I saw people standing on the road, groups of men with absolutely no employment, nothing to do. People were just hoping that there was a side job or something that could pay for a few hours so they could go and do that side job and get a little bit of money. America was completely destroyed. There was no job for wealthy people. There was no job for, for people who had less. It was exactly, God was putting the images exactly like it was during the times of the Great Depression. And so he's saying that in the future, the same thing is going to happen. America is going to be hit with an identical financial crisis, whereby in the future, you will have no jobs at all because the economy will be corrupted and destroyed. And here's what the Lord is saying. He says the decay is already visible in the economy and it's going to get worse. But what do we see on TV? We see the people who lead this country emphatically stating that there is no recession that there is no inflation, that it's all a trick of the light. It is all just mis wrong numbers entered into the computer. It is liars who are lying to try and make the American people feel that the economy is not robust. They're telling us employment is up, and yet nearly every single person is searching for a job or trying to get a better one that covers their needs. The decay is visible. It's going to get worse, but they're not going to stop lying to us. So people who depend on mainstream, mainstream media to tell you the truth, you are already on the wrong path. God says that mass unemployment is coming. Mass unemployment means the greater majority of humanity has nowhere to pull finances from. In the economy that we have here, you sell your skills and your strength and your time in exchange for money so that you can access what you need. But when there's mass unemployment, that means there's no jobs, there's no industries to offer jobs, and there's no money in circulation. So both the sellers, the stores, the Macy's, and the everything else that we can already see closing, they're closing in groups of 50s and hundreds and 200s and 300s now, whereby it was just so-and-so is closing 15 branches. Now entire malls are going dead and it's not by accident. This is the decay that God is talking about. It's visible to people, but the problem is that most people are occupied with other things and so they can see the decay, but very few people are doing the spiritual math on what does this mean for us in a few years time. God says that everything will shut down, everything will go silent, and there will only be one sound. And I prophesied that sound three or four years ago. He says it will be the sound of people wailing for daily bread while the government has no solution to the problem. A lot of Americans don't know what it means to go hungry. Many people in this country have never skipped a meal in their life. So the idea that it's possible to wail, a wail is a loud, pained, and hopeless cry. The idea that people in the richest, or says it's the richest, God says America's broke. So let, let me not quote the propaganda, but quote the truth. America's functionally broke, functionally bankrupt, and very good at lying about it. But the nation is called the richest country in the world, the most powerful, and yet the idea that people in such a country could end up crying for food, as people cry for food in Yemen sometimes, as they cry for food in Iraq, as they cry for food in Syria, as they cry for food in many countries that have suffered brutal and long civil wars in Africa, it's probably out of most people's ability to conceive and yet, please don't forget that the master's voice has two prophecies that are called America will be like Zimbabwe. In those prophecies, God basically said that the money is going to shatter, crumble, stumble, fall down, and become utterly useless. And everything that the nation of Zimbabwe has gone through, we will go through. There are quite a few testimonies from Zimbabweans under the written blog at the master's voice prophecy blog and under the video. So if you want to find out what that country went through, it would be very good for you to go and look at. God says, they are pretending now that the matter is in containment. 
speaking of the rot and the decay of the economy. They're pretending now that it's in containment, but I say to you, rot has spread throughout the ship and soon it will run aground on the rocks of a global collapse that will set humanity back 50 years in terms of its reach and severity. A huge global financial, fin financial crisis is at hand. Staggering economies, total collapse, financial shutdown, and the birth of the new world order. The new world order will rise out of this crisis with bland promises of restoring order and making things better for everyone. Rest assured, in the rising desperation, people will receive this news with relief, but it is a lie and a deception. The new order is death. Death for the masses. Death for the poor, especially. Forced labor and eventually work camps in which multitudes will meet their end. So it is just that I have not had time to put, I guess the last 20 now, prophecies of the master's voice in print on the master's voice. Time is not as it once was with me, but I will do my best because I strongly recommend that people should read these prophecies. You read these prophecies, I think that you will take this work a lot more seriously than most people do. Most people feel that this is just something casual I'm doing. They just feel that someone would just pick up on her own and have years year after year after year, dedicating time to making videos and just having discussions. And then people can just pass by and have discussions back at me and let me know what their opinion is and move on. But something very different is going on here. God says that this country is on its way to its final destruction. This is mystery Babylon and God has already pronounced judgment on America and no amount of dissent and upset and complaining. And well, I just don't agree is going to change that. So when I'm reading out these things, I'm reading out final things that are going to happen. And as this prophecy gets a lot more graphic and a lot more final, it is my hope that people will begin to make their way to the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. The website is www.the-masters-voice.com and begin to go through those prophetic words one by one with the sober-minded understanding that no matter what happens in any other country around the world, God has laid out in very detailed fashion how America is going to come to her knees and to her end. It behooves Americans to know what God is saying. It behooves Americans to know why God is saying it, that his judgment is just, it is perfect. He has assessed this nation from end to end from top to toe, and he has found nothing to commend us to heaven. That is why the judgment in Revelation 17 and 18 was already set before anyone began to warn here. The rot is spreading throughout this ship. Financial rot, economic rot, social rot in every corner. And God says that soon the ship is going to run aground. When a ship runs aground, it means that instead of slowly coming into the harbor, it is driven either by the winds or by its engine full speed onto the rocks. Now, nowadays the ships are made of metal. So I don't know if that actually causes any harm, but in the old days, the boats were made of wood. And if you ran aground, the rocks destroyed the bottom of the ship. And it was usually impossible to save that ship because once the planks, once the bottom of the boat had been ripped out, water rapidly filled all the compartments of the boat and that thing would be sunk and no good. And God says that this global collapse that's coming is going to set all humanity back 50 years in terms of how far it's going to reach and how severe it's going to be. The prophecy that talks about this is called nothing but scattering. I brought that prophecy last year. That was one of the live prayer calls that the Lord gave me. A live prayer call is where I'm on the phone praying with others and then prophecy just begins to bubble forth. It's not one of these where I have a dream or it's not one of these where the Lord will sit with me and speak to me and tell me, write down all my words and record what I'm saying. 
Live prayer call is where we're praying about something else entirely. And then live information, prophetic information from the Lord begins to bubble forth out of my mouth. And I'm just speaking, 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 saying what is being put into my heart, seeing the pictures that I'm seeing, expressing them. So there are about five or six of that um, on the blog. And nothing but scattering is about 35 minutes of God explaining very clearly that there is coming a great terrible far-reaching economic global crash that is going to reach as far into asia one of the sentences from that prayer call is that i see the japanese economy shuddering but it is not going to be destroyed however europe america will take you down totally with her because I saw that the European Union and the United States are completely enmeshed in their economies. And I was saying, Europe, why did you do this? Why did you integrate yourself so closely with a nation that cannot balance its books? A nation that does not even practice honest money and honest politics within its own borders. Why would you take someone who is driving her vehicle into the wall and let her sit in the driver's seat of your economy? And so in Europe, when this global collapse comes, it's going to be very strongly felt there, mirrored there. And in any other economy that is enmeshed with America, meaning they're equal trade partners, partners, or that is subservient to America, any country that is depending on America for food aid, financial aid, um, technology aid, any kind of aid, when this country goes and slams against the wall, one of the first things she's going to do is cut off her arms. I spoke of that in one of the prophecies. It doesn't come to mind now, but I saw that because America was going through so much problems, she was going through social ills at home. Her people were fighting each other. Um, she was having political difficulties. She was having economic difficulties. I saw that America began to cut off her own arms. One of the arms she cut off was the military. America began to shut down all her bases. I think this country has over 130 bases around the world. Well, she began to pull soldiers back from deployment because she could no longer maintain military bases. She could no longer maintain um, embassies and she could no longer maintain some other third kind of diplomatic diplomatic presence in other countries. So there were three things that um, the nation of America began to pull back on she began to pull back because she had no finances, she had no resources, she had no support. And so if there are countries out there that are dependent on the US dollar, such as Zimbabwe is, for example, then those countries are really going to fulfill what God says here. The huge global financial financial crisis is at hand. Staggering economies, when your economy is staggering, it suffers a financial hit. I'm not able to say what the, facial, the various types of financial hits are. It's just that when they do happen, maybe it's a currency crash or maybe it's something else, overnight devaluation, or maybe it's something else. But when it hits, it is almost impossible for the entire nation to keep its feet. People need to be more sober-minded when they're listening to these things. What does it mean when your country cannot keep its feet financially? One of the first ways that people will feel that is that they won't be able to get money. You won't be able to get access to money. I prophesied these things early in 2022, in March 2022, concerning the nation of Nigeria, that they were going to go through an economic and financial shock. And people mocked that prophecy. They didn't take it seriously. And yet it only took took eight months for that prophecy to be fulfilled in January of 2023 when they received a sudden decree from their government. ATMs were shut. People had no access to money. People were weeping. People were devastated. If you don't have money on hand, you can't get gas. You can't keep the basic things at home going that you need to. You can't get food. There's a ton of things that you can't handle. And in a country like this, where people don't even keep cash on hand, where they're fully depending on cards, it's just a swipey, swipey tap in Apple Pay, Samsung Pay life because everybody wants to tap and not use wisdom. That kind of thing, when it happens overnight, the ATMs are not accessible. You will not have access to money. You won't be able to get your hands on money. That means that it's people who planned ahead, people who have the spirit of Noah, the obedient man of God and have things on hand. 
those people will be better off than those who are not. If you want to know more about that, I think the prophecy is called the black horse. The best way for you to do these things, because I'm not always going to be able to comb the blog and give 50 links in the description, is when you hear a prophecy name, when the Lord actually reminds me what the prophecy is called, go to the master's voice and put the title of the prophecy in the search box at the bottom of any page, and the prophecy will come up. You read the prophecy, and at the bottom of every prophecy, once I've made a video for it, the video is there. It is time for people to feed themselves because time is not as it was with me before. This global collapse is going to make economies stagger, and some of the economies are going to experience total collapse. This is like Venezuela. You wake up and then the country is just destroyed. Nothing in the country is working. People throw the money out in the streets and begin to walk on it just as, I, as I've been prophesying here for, for years. The money's no good now. There has to be some kind of other intervention. And the intervention that the beast is bringing is the kind of money you can't see. There are at least five prophecies from this year, all related to banking. And the fact that God says we are going to something called a system of coin, not Bitcoin. It is some kind of coin, money that stays in the computer, money that you cannot pull out. ATMs are going to become obsolete. We will not be able to go to the ATMs anymore and access finances. And so some economies are going to stagger, meaning that they will reel like a drunken man, but they will not completely collapse. But other economies are going to suffer total collapse. God says there's going to be financial shutdown. That is talking of the banks. There are at least five comprehensive bank prophecies on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. Please go and look them up. You can also look them up here on YouTube. You can look them up on Rumble, on BitChute, on Brighteon, and you can come up to date with what God is saying. And the last thing he's talking about is the birth of the new world order. So I'm going to have to use another phrase because uh, this app has a habit of tagging everything. But the NW final letter, God says, is, is being born out of this crisis. So this crisis is not a crisis that just happened because somebody mistakenly fell asleep at the wheel in the prophecy that is called nothing but staggering. God said, that what is about to happen is like a train that has been put on maximum capacity speed and then left to run too fast. Even bullet trains, even speed trains have a limit. The engineers know that there's a limit that you can push the train to. If you go above that limit, the train becomes uncontrollable because it has too, moment, too much momentum. And when the train has too much momentum, the next thing it's going to do is it's going to start to skip and jump the tracks. And once the train begins to skip and jump the tracks, that means that all that metal, all that steel, all that power is no longer safely making contact with the rails. And at that time, it's just a moment of time before the train is derailed and there's loss of property, there's loss of life, there's huge economic um, losses that follow when a train is derailed. And so this is a deliberate collapse. This is an orchestrated collapse. This is not conspiracy theory hour here. This is God speaking into the earth to tell people who are confused about why does God talk about these things? God is concerned about his people first and foremost. The fact that they're uninformed, the fact that they have so many confusing ideas about what the future is going to look like. So much deception and also so many opinions and refusing to listen. And God is trying to interject here like a sharp knife to say it's going this way because the architects of destruction have orchestrated it this way. And if you don't pay attention, you will pay Pay the penalty even if you say you are a child of God. Children of God, listen. But those who are children of God in name only, the crowd that are Lord, Lord, they call him Lord, Lord, but they don't do what he says. They call him Lord, Lord, but they constantly have a counter opinion when he's speaking to them. Those people are going to fall through the net exactly like others because they could not hear. Noah's day is the standard. We are in the days of Noah. P 
people are eating and drinking and doing every other thing and not preparing because they've forgotten that in the days of Noah, a flood was coming. A great judgment was coming. A sweeping judgment that took away all living, even the animals who hadn't done anything. God said in one of the prophecies that he doesn't understand why people are so amazed when they hear the term great reset because it happened in the past already. That was the greatest reset of all. God simply deleted all humanity, all the systems of the day. He deleted the finances of the day. He deleted the governments of the day. He deleted everything and he deleted the people of the day and he reset with only eight. If you cannot listen, eight is a very small number and that number is going to be spiritually replicated God is concerned that the church is not listening. God is concerned that the church is not ready, but God is not going to delay these things because these things must come to pass. Satan is going to be given his short time. And if Christians don't get ready, Christians are going to pay the price along with everybody else. So the NW final letter is going to be birthed out of this crisis. This is an orchestrated crisis because people have an agenda and they're trying to get to a certain appointment with this new system that is coming, the technological system, the system of the beast. And he says that they will make bland promises to restore order and make things better for everyone. And I was puzzled that God would use this word, this word bland. The word bland means vague. It means without color. It means not remarkable. When it comes to food, when we say food is bland, it means that the food is tasteless. I was so puzzled as to why the Lord would use this word bland. And I was turning it over in my mind. And he said to me, when it comes to promising true things, when it comes to being able to carry out real things, when it comes to being able to alleviate real human suffering and to give promises that impart life to the human soul, the new world, oh, is unable to do that. And because of that celestial, its promises are useless. Its promises are dead. They will look alive, these promises. We're going to see some of the best advertising in the end times that any of us have ever seen in our lives. If you talk about reach, if you talk about wittiness, if you talk about color, if you talk about them getting the best of the best celebrities and the best looking people and, and the most pleasing, visually pleasing displays, they're going to advertise this coming utopia in such a way that God says desperate people will receive this news with relief. But he says that it's a lie and a deception. What the new order really represents is death. Not death of one or two. Not death of a thousand or ten thousand. Not even death of a hundred thousand. The reason that written prophecies are so powerful is because every single word is playing its part. And that is why I insist that people read the blog. You can listen, but make sure that you read these prophecies because when you sit down and read it and think, why did he choose the words that he chose? Then you will finally come to the place of sober mindedness, which is what you need to survive. The phrase the Lord used is death for the masses. That means that between me and the false prophets that are always telling Americans that we're going into glory days, someone must be lying because masses means most of. Masses means large numbers of. Masses means the majority. The new world spells death for the masses. Death for the poor, especially. God says it spells forced labor and it eventually will spawn work camps in which multitudes will meet their end. So this is sounding exactly like the Third Reich if you've paid any attention to history. It's sounding exactly like the Third Reich. Mass eliminations, the poor being targeted, forced labor, and also work camps that God says that multitudes will die in. So why aren't people listening? 
Why are people gathered like flies around waste, listening to prophecies about how the next caucus and this and that? Why are they huddled in political circles, telling, uh, telling them stories about how their favorite this and their favorite that is surely coming back because he's God's man and he's got a plan for the nation? Why is this happening? Who's thought about it? It's because God has already given this nation over to deception. But when I say it, people get upset. If God really loved America as Americans insist he loves them, one who loves another will never let that other one traffic in deception. If God loved America, he would be fighting for her. If God loved America, he would be, he would be powerfully drawing her to himself. And the primary sign of, the primary emphasis of that love would be that Americans would have a love for truth. But they heap up teachers according to their lusts, who are not teachers, by the way. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. And the teachers that they heap up to fulfill the lust, the things their itching ears want to know about, God says that they tell you exactly what you want to hear. And in that process, you are deceived and you remain deceived because you do not love the truth that would have saved you. Only a precious few love the truth. And that's why it doesn't say the new world is bringing life for the masses. It says it's bringing mass death, a death that will target the poor, especially. If you see what they're doing to homeless people now, this is most people. You look at them doing it to the homeless people now, you just think, poor guy. You don't know that in a few short years, a structure is coming and a system is coming that will make you and your family that poor guy an eliminating structure, a structure that is a very efficient blade that is ready to cut down American corn. This is what the Lord said. Tell them what I said. Tell them the pogrom's prophecy and the one about Kamala Harris in the future will be fulfilled exactly as they were spoken, exactly as they were revealed to you. Remind them that my wrath abides on them and will not be removed. Those words will be fulfilled exactly as they were said, as will every other message you have declared in my name so far. The two, pro the two prophecies that I'm now going to read in your hearing, this is old people who have heard them already. This is new people who have never heard them, you may not have had the time to go and hear them. The two prophecies are called pogroms in America and communism in America. Read it to them and tell them that I will fulfill it in their lifetimes exactly as I have said. And the scripture he gave me is this, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. This is Isaiah 55 and 11. So I was going over one of my old prophecies a few weeks ago, and I was struck by the scripture that God gave. I think it's out of the Psalms where it was saying, God, you will defend your words from this generation forever. And I took the time in that video to explain what that means. Many people feel that defending God's words means that you have to get into an argument with people and you have to convince people that, no, this is really what the scripture says and this is what it really means. And that's an activity that I do not waste my time with because you can read the Bible however you like for now and you can interpret it however you like for now. Truth with the Bible is not subjective though, meaning that you can't have your truth and I have my truth and then Ben have his truth and then Sally have her truth. The biblical truth is objective. It is one standard because it comes from one God who himself said that I am the way and the truth and the life. That means that truth itself is Christ. There are not many Christ. There is only one Christ. So there is only one truth. If God created only man for woman and woman for man, then every other iteration of that truth man with man or woman with woman or man with child or woman with child or man or woman with a beast or with a fallen angel 
is not truth. People will say in the last days that those things are also acceptable. They will say that, that those things are love, that a man can become a woman, that he can be trans, that a woman can be a man. She can be a trans man, but there's no such things. These things are not supported by empirical evidence on earth, in science, in reality, and they're not supported by Christ himself, who is truth. So when God says he's going to defend this word that he says, my word that goes forth from my mouth will not come back to me empty. That means that God will make sure that everything he says comes to pass. And he said, read to them the words of these two prophecies and tell them that I will fulfill it in their lifetimes, exactly as I have said. God will defend his word without me. God will bring his own word to pass without me. I'm simply the custodian of those words. But once I release those words, it's called a proclamation. A proclamation is a particular type of announcement that comes from a higher authority. In this case, it comes from the King of Kings and the, Lords of, and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ himself. So these proclamations are coming into the earth for all living, especially in America, to know that this is what is going to be the end of this nation. Just a moment while I get the prophecies ready. The first prophecy that I will read is called Pogroms in America, and I received it on July the 17th, 2021. That makes this prophecy almost exactly two years shy of a few days. And I had a dream, and I cannot remember exactly what that dream was, but the Lord spoke to me after I had a dream, and he said that there will be pogroms in America. A pogrom is genocide. A pogrom is mass killing. It's where there is a targeted agenda to wipe out a certain demographic or certain groups, and it can be very brutal because it's being carried out by the state mechanism. So this isn't just a case of, as happened in Rwanda, I think, it's one ethnic group against another ethnic group or, you know, things like that. It is where the killing is government run. It's government funded. It's government initiated. It is a whole program run by the government against the citizens. And because of that, it's very targeted it covers a very wide area. It is very methodical and it is targeted towards a particular race or gender or a group of people that we will simply call the undesirables. The end goal of a program is to exterminate that group or those multiple groups from existence. So programs aren't used to send a message. Programs aren't an occasional killing of that targeted group. Program is hard work to wipe out and blot out a certain type of people. And so it's usually seen as de facto legal action, meaning that you can't exactly find it in any law book, but by dint of the fact that the government is doing it, that's what makes a program seem legal because it's coming from the highest authority in the land. There are never laws that are going to support mass murder, but a program can be justified Please listen. Pogroms can be justified by the government, by them simply twisting the existing laws to breaking points and then superimposing executive orders on top. So what they'll do is, there's no law that says you can wipe this out or you can wipe them out. What they will do is they will begin to bend the law and bend the law and bend the law and begin to replace the bent law with executive orders that give them the right to do what they're doing. So what I saw is that in America, instead of it only being the government that does programs against people, they are going to have private help. This, pro this prophecy showed that private companies in America are going to help to kill people. Private companies in America are going to have standing armies. I spoke about this in the prophecy that is called, that's the dream I had actually. The dream is called tracking and technology in America. These two dreams are from the In America series. So 
It's tracking and technology in America, pogroms in America, communism in America. Those are the dreams in the In America series. So God said that the beast is going to exterminate Christians in the, in the USA until there's such a small number that they're going to start hiding to save their lives. So again, as you're listening to this prophecy, you can see that it directly flies in the face of this expectation of a glorious church and a strong church that's going into revival. The church is actually going somewhere and God says that's into hiding if they want to live. God said that Christians in America will be driven into hiding for their lives. Otherwise, they will lose them. So as you listen, this is telling you that if you want to be a loud and a proud Christian, you will not be able to do that for very long because the times that are coming are going to warrant silence and wisdom unless you will lose your life very quickly. America will flow with the blood of its citizens who will become victims of the state. And so God says that they're going to be rounding up people and they're going to be killing them for absolutely no reason at all. And when we get back to the main prophecy that is entitled, they will have nothing, July the 14th, 2023, you're going to hear exactly this that he said from two years ago come up. The Holy Spirit is very consistent. The Lord will say the same things over and over again. And I've already said that when God is doing this, he's doing it so that these words can enter directly into our hearts, into our minds and stay put. Do not listen to these prophecies and forget them. Do not listen to these prophecies and then get calm when it seems that everything is going back to normal, whatever that means. Listen to these prophecies and let these prophecies be the standard in the middle that you cleave to, just like the word of God. Always remember that the things that God is saying are going to happen to us are going to happen, whether it's sunny, whether the world is nice outside and whether it's, it's all fun and games and everything goes back to normal, that is temporary because God says that if we let down our guard, we are the ones who are going to be taken by surprise when suddenly, suddenly, as these things come to pass. And so God says that people will be getting rounded up and killed for absolutely nothing, for the smallest crimes, for the smallest infractions, meaning the smallest breaking of the laws he says that there will be official rules that will govern daily life and people will be killed for no reason at all. And the scripture by which lives will be lost, he says that lives will be lost exactly as it says in Revelation 13 and 7. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and overcome them. So the Lord has said in several prophecies, one of those that you can go and look at is definitely called the man of sin. And it deals squarely with the fact that Barack Obama will be back in the highest seat of power in the land. I didn't say the middle seat, and I definitely didn't say NATO, and I didn't say the, the United Nations or wherever people in their various theories keep placing him. That man is going to sit at the apex of power in the United States. Doesn't matter what the constitutional say, Constitution says about two terms and no more. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks we will see this man back sitting in the crown position. And when he comes back, he will not be hampered by America's troublesome laws. America's troublesome laws that says you can only be a president twice. And America's troublesome laws that says this and says that. He is going to come back and he is going to have the powers of a despot. He is going to have the powers of a dictator. He is going to have the same kind of power that Americans are always talking about, Kim Jong-un and Kim Jong, whoever has too much power. Barack Obama is going to have 10 million times more power than that. The kind of power that that man had in the dreams that God showed me, he had the powers of the old French monarchs. That means that when Obama said something, as he was saying it, it became laws. You only find that kind of power in the old monarchies and in the Bible. And the example that I gave all the way back two years ago when I made this prophecy is speaking about the Medes and the Persians, that when the king said something, it could be made into a law, such as when the Persian king said that they should put his wife Vashti out of his sight. It was an immediate decree. When he woke up the next morning and found that he had banished his queen, he was looking for her and he couldn't get her back. Because in those days, that kind of law was ironclad. That is the kind of law that Barack Obama is going to be able to make. As he says, so shall it be. 
it will become law. And this is a democratic country. And I know that people's minds are reeling and they cannot put two and two together. People are already suffering mental schism. And yet I have a single eye, a single mind. And that single mind says, whatever the Lord says is what I say. And he said that Obama is coming back and he will be at the apex of this country. All power will be consolidated in him. He will not need any courts. He will not need any lawmakers. He will not need the house. He will not need any of those things. It is going to be only the executive all the time. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And the end times church God is saying will be cut down so sharply by this man that it will be like watching limbs being hacked off a tree. And I have spoken that many times in recorded messages on the blog. So this is the dream that I had. I dreamt of Barack Obama. He was very powerful in America. He was the president of America. And I saw the White House with an image like the sun was rising behind it, but it was not the real sun. It was the head of Obama that was rising as the sun. So his head was coming to prominence in the background of the White House. His head was the sun and he was wearing a huge grin. I saw that this sun rose and stopped halfway behind the White House, meaning that it was there in a parabolic arc behind the White House and had not fully risen over that house. And I saw that he, ha he had four types of power. I can't remember now what types of power this man was given, but he had four specific powers that made him the most powerful ruler America had ever had. I saw that he made four laws and those four laws placed absolute rulership in himself. They were four laws that completely changed American life forever. He had the power to do anything, absolutely anything. I saw that Obama sent for people to work for him. And when he sent for you to work for him, you could not refuse. You were relocated to DC and you had to work for him. He brought these people to the white house and he told them what their new role would be. He hired Christians and he brought them to the white house. And this man tried very hard to be a compelling leader. He was very engaging and charming. And that, that persona of his that we've seen already, it truly captured a lot of people. But as he was speaking to people, all I saw sitting on his shoulders was a grinning death head. His entire head was the grinning head of death, a skeleton. And whatever he wanted became law and his word were absolute. And during this time period that I saw, I saw death orders begin to go out across the United States. I saw that they were typed up in a special office that was created specially to handle the highest type of crime in the United States, citizens arrest. Right now, a citizen's arrest is if somebody tries to rob a store or tries to do something, other people around can jump on that person and restrain that person until a member of the police force can come along and arrest that person's, that person formally. When we, grab one of our own citizens and hold on to them for something that we've seen them doing that is called a citizen's arrest but i saw that citizens arrest in this time when obama came to power was the actual citizens being arrested all the time there was something called the office of citizens arrest and there i saw secretaries typing up orders of arrest which basically were orders of death for Americans who were found guilty of doing whatever unbelievably small and pointless and unheard of new crime, quote fingers, they were accused of. People were being found guilty without any recourse to the court system. Just as I said a few moments ago, there was no need to go to court. As soon as an order of citizens arrest was made ready for you, they would hunt you down they would charge you, meaning that they would read out this order to you and they would execute you based on what it said you were guilty of. These orders were typed night and day. The Office of Citizens Arrest 
that whole branch that is in charge of hunting down people and putting them to death, as I saw in the dream that God gave me, it was not a nine to five type of office. It didn't open and it didn't have op hours of operation. It was open all the time. And I saw that only women worked in that office. It was only ladies and they typed on old style typewriters. And I was confused as to why they were doing that. They did not use laptops. They used old click clack typewriters and they were chewing gum all the time. And they were dressed kind of like women from the sixties and they were busy nights and day nights and day. And those men that wear black, the men that wear the all black uniform with the helmets, with the visor that can sometimes lift. I saw that these orders were being right written night and day. And some of the things I saw that they were typing furiously, creating these online forms were name address and crime name address and crime so these orders were printed out and then they were put in an out tray and then these men that dress head to toe in this in this heavy black swat gear they would come in and they would grab a fistful of death orders and sometimes the guy would lift him his visor for a while and chat with the secretary share a few jokes and then they would go out and they would serve these orders i saw that the armed forces here in the united states went out night and day taking people away based on whatever the order said you could die for unbelievably small things you could die for literally anything under the sun any small thing they said you did you could die for it the next thing i saw was corporations assisting in these deaths Major U.S. corporations, especially technology giants, tech companies, but also companies in home goods, finance, car companies, and so on, were participating in and assisting the government with these killings. The U.S. government at that time had power, but no real money. What the government did, it formed a powerful alliance with these companies like Amazon and Apple and Microsoft and all the rest of them that have so many billions of dollars in finances. But right now they are just companies. So they're constrained, they're legal entities. They have to follow certain laws. Well, in the future, those laws will be greatly expanded to give these guys sweeping powers like you would not believe. American corporations, especially the ones that are part of the integrated agenda with the government, I saw that the kind of power these companies had, they were operating like private nations. They operated like countries. And so they had the money and the government had the official stamps for things. And so the two of them together was a deadly combination against the people of this nation. So major U.S. corporations were assisting the government because the government had no money, but corporations do. They have unlimited resources and they lent them freely to the task of eliminating citizens, the task of pogroms, Amazon conquered people. Please listen. Amazon conquered people. Amazon was a central player in these pogroms and they put many people to death with their private army. I don't know how to explain it, but they had an army and I saw it with every major technology company or billionaire startup in America. They all had standing armies. I'm not talking about a group of mercenaries. I'm not talking a bunch of guys who used to be in the special forces and then they retire and you ask them, Hey, you guys, why don't you come and form an army and just be like my private bodyguard service? I'm saying that it was a paid army of trained soldiers doing what the soldiers of actual countries do. I saw private armies with soldiers trained by the company wearing the uniforms of the company with guns and other high tech weapons, assisting the government in this system of going to homes, arresting people and putting them to death. And I remember that the uniform that Amazon had was a very chic, dark gray onesie thing. So all the men, they wore a onesie and it had a cinched waist. So the waist was sort of like an elastic band and they had the smile logo, the yellow smile logo on one breast pocket. Amazon had a start standing army that helped Obama kill people and Apple had a standing army that also helped the rich companies were instrumental in hauling people to the death camps 
and killing them. As I said, you could die for just about anything. Just think of it. Think of something that could never conceivably be a crime. It became a crime in America. And when I go back to the main prophecy, you will hear that repeated. And one of the things you should notice, this prophecy is July 2021. The next one that I'm going to cover is October 2022. And today's prophecy is July 2023. God keeps bringing the same message. So it is time for you as an American to ask yourself, where are these messages coming from? Are you still going to convince yourself that these messages are the product of me having a bad night of sleep? The detail that's in these messages, the emphasis, the amount of time that God took to craft dreams in which my eyes saw all these things, Are you still going to convince yourself that this is one woman's imagination taken too far or is something else going on here and it is high time that people listened? I'll continue. You could die for just about anything, whether you did it or if you even tried to do it, if you tried anything that was counted as an infraction, a transgression of the law, it counted against you and you would be put to death. Here's the terrible part. Even if you didn't do it, even if someone only lied and said that you did it, you could be put to death. Life was savage in the extreme and we had to live through it. So to those who think that they are going somewhere in some catching away and they're going to leave some mysterious contingent of sinners called the left behind. I'm sitting here on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ, telling you that the words we had to live through it is what the future holds. And so the feeling that I had throughout this dream, I will share it. The feeling that I had throughout this dream and at the end of the dream, the Lord explained it to me was the feeling of animal farm. In Animal Farm, all the animals were treated equally badly and all the animals agreed that Farmer Brown was an evil man. He was a tough taskmaster. He wasn't fair to the chickens. He wasn't fair to the ducks. He wasn't fair to the pigs. He wasn't fair to Boxer the horse. He wasn't fair to anyone. And the animals felt that there should be staged a revolution. And so they successfully staged the revolution. And as all new revolutionaries know, after the fighting is done and the dust settles, We need to figure out how to do things. And so they started off as a collective, working together, everyone playing their part. But soon the pigs, being shrewd and crafty animals, began to craft new rules. And they began to change the rules of all for one and one for all, which was the rules of the revolution, into a new set of rules where it's all for one, but more for us. And the pigs rose to power. And in time, if you know the story, the pigs were 10 times worse than Farmer Brown ever was. The pigs, who are animals, began to order and orchestrate the deaths of the other animals. And people began to feel distrustful of everyone else in the barnyard. No animal felt that they could trust the other because they didn't know who was a snitch of the pig and who you could safely complain to. And I've said many times that the United States is going to be exactly like Animal Farm, except it's going to be people instead of the animals that can't trust each other, that don't know who is a snitch. You don't know who's wearing a wire. You don't know who's one of those social credit score Um, hall monitors that are going to be checking your chores and listening if you complain and report you and things like that. And when we go back to the main prophecy, you will, if you've listened to many of these prophecies or read many of them, you will see the same aspects that I've been speaking about here on video for three years and speaking about on four years, going on four now, past four actually, on the blog. And so the feeling in the dream is that we were back in Nazi Germany that we were under the absolute control of a government that had very, very powerful people in it, people that overshadowed everything that we did, people who were larger than life. It was exactly like Nazi Germany. And we all know that Nazi Germany gave rise to stars, so to speak, such as the infamous Dr. Mengele. We still speak about those people to this day. 
And so one of the examples that I saw is, it was a man who came to the police station and he said that he had information. So he said he had information on his neighbor and the cops were looking at him with interest as if to say, go on. Nobody said anything, but they gave him a look. And so he respectfully took off his cap in front of the officers. And then he said, well, you know, I'm not one to be in anybody's business. Um, I love the government and I think that everything is perfect just the way it is. I think we should respect the laws because that's how we show that we love the government. Well, um, my neighbor has four chickens. She used to have three, but then uh, one of the hens gave birth last month and now she has four. And, and I know that the limit and the rule for our chickens is three. The government says that we can't have more than three chickens. So I've been waiting for her to kill her fourth chicken, but she hasn't done it yet. And uh, so I decided to come and tell you guys, because if everybody starts having four chickens, then everything will fall apart and we'll have chaos in this country. That's what I came to say. And by the way, I love the government. This is what an American citizen said. He came to report his neighbor because she had one chicken more than the law allowed. And I saw into that man how hungry he was and how desperate he was that he didn't have enough at his house and that the free food and the free rations, quote fingers, that I will discuss when I go back to the main prophecy, which is called, they will have nothing, that they weren't enough for him and his family. And so he came to report his neighbor's chicken crime in the hope that the government would give him a reward. And I've spoken about those rewards that people will have a lot of incentive to snitch on one another because the government will take some part of your grocery bill off. They will give you tickets to things like movies. They will give you tickets to the airline and to the train station and bump up your flights. There will be a lot of rewards and incentives in the end days. And I asked two years ago when I was bringing the first prophecy, I said, do you really believe this storyline that Americans tell one another and say, we're good people here, we love our neighbor. God said to just wait until there aren't enough resources, until there isn't enough food, until there's an incredible amount of pressure from the government. And he said, the true nature of people will come out and then Americans will see just how vile and criminal towards one another they are. And look, we're not in the social credit score time now but look at how nasty and ill-tempered and violent and demon-possessed people already are. I spoke to a friend today and she said, you know, Celestial, I just can't make sense of it. It's as if something has gotten into people. And I told her, visualize this, a very full bathtub of soapy water. You can't see that the bathtub has big rocks, medium-sized rocks and small rocks in there, but let someone reach in and pull out the plug. As the water begins to go down, the big rocks will surface first and then the medium rocks until finally you will see the granular pebbles at the bottom. The big rocks are all the evil, the sin, the wickedness, the selfishness, and the massive character flaws that exist in millions of people, not only in this country, but around the world. You say you're a Christian, you haven't worked on your tongue, you haven't worked on your eye gates, you haven't worked on the lusts that are in your heart, you haven't worked on a single thing, but you feel so confident to throw the name of Jesus around like a ping pong or a badminton ball. So as the water goes down, as the pressure increases, as there's less resources, and as the jobs disappear, and as the economic struggles come, and the crisis hits, people will go savage. People will go dog eat dog. People will go to the police station and report their neighbor. And this man was ashamed. And the cops looked at that man like he was a cockroach. In their hearts, they looked at him and they smiled. And the reason that they smiled was because the social conditioning had worked perfectly. America was turned from the land of the free and the home of the brave into a country where another American would report his neighbor knowing that it would get her killed simply because he hoped to get a reward.
And God was showing me that the government will know when these things happen, that they have succeeded in destroying the minds and the souls of people. And I saw that one of the cops threw some coins to that man and he told him, thank you for your service to your country. And that man took that money. He did take it and he went home feeling like trash, but he was glad to have money to feed his children. And he pretended not to notice when the police came later and arrested his neighbor and her four chickens and took them all away, never to return. And that night, he sobbed and sobbed over what he had done because he realized that he just had someone murdered over a fourth chicken. He wept because he knew that the coins he got as a reward would soon be gone, but that woman would never come home again. And that's how America felt in the dream. It felt dangerous, tense, a nation where you never knew whether your life was at risk and for what. All somebody needed to do was point the finger and say, it was her, she did it. And you would be on the run or you would be in the fight for your life. God said that there would be so much killing in the streets that the streets will run red with blood, literally and figuratively. I saw bloods on the roads. I saw blood on the roads in my dream. Blood that was still bright red. And the reason for that bright red blood on the roads is because there was a public killing that had just taken place there. And so when the execution was over, all the people had dispersed, but the tarmac was still red and glittery the way that blood would do in the sun. But there were other places in America where the blood had been on the road for quite a few days and it dried and it went hard and it turned black and it was still sticky. And so all you had to do was avoid those places and look away when you were walking. The Lord told me that there will be public executions in America. He said that whatever went on during the dark Salem and witch hunt years of American history will be nothing compared to this. Public style ex executions will be done where everybody watches as an example. People, they will force citizens to attend these executions, even children. The public executions were mandatory attendance. And the reason they did that, they wanted it to be as an example and a deterrent to the rest of us that we should not get any funny ideas about freedom or about being rebels or things like that. Even small children were made to watch and they were told not to cry. Public executions were to deter rebellion and to serve as a warning to all who might get ideas. That's how God kept saying it. Celestial, this is what happens. This is what they will do to warn you when you get ideas. And so, The last part of this dream, as I've stated, when things involve me in dreams, I usually will remove them. And even here, I said that I don't like having personal information about myself on the master's voice, that I prefer to keep my life and this work separate. I am here for you to focus on God's words, not me. And so I usually take everything out, but occasionally the Lord makes me leave things in for his own reasons. And I saw that in this era of wanton killing, of snitching on one another, I was not put to death, nor was my family. I was given a letter. I had a special letter that I had to keep on my person at all times. It was a decree that I should not be harmed nor shall anyone associated with me be harmed. It was an embossed letter written on official letterhead. It was a very hard, the hard expensive paper embossed and it had a seal at the top of it. And I had to carry that letter with me at all times. Everyone in my family also had this letter. They were given copies of my original and their copies were stamped and dated and notarized so that it would be known by anyone who stopped them that these were approved copies of my original letter and not fakes. My letter 
was the only thing keeping us alive, but I knew that it was God who had preserved our souls by getting me that letter, just as he saved the souls of his people as they traveled from Egypt into other places. The last thing that the Lord said to me about this dream is that he will place certain of his people, these are Christians, nobody else, in high places in the end times. The Lord says that he has been preparing people for a long time in the shadows. Some of them are nobodies that no one ever heard of. And he said some of the people that he's going to use are people from more well-known backgrounds. So these are people who are not Christians, the ones from well-known backgrounds. God said he will claim them in the end times as his own, as well as putting his own unknown people and some of them known in high places. God says that he is preparing people in the larger body of Christ to step into positions of power. He's preparing them to step into positions of influence in the last days. And this prophecy is from 2020 and it is called end times wine. God says that the reason he will do this is because he's going to have an eye in the palace. And when you hear that, you think of certain people, you think of David, who was a Christian, and he was in a palace that was full of political intrigue. The palace of King Saul was not an easy place for anyone to live. You think of Queen Esther, who was married to an unbeliever, and yet God put her in that position for his own purposes, because she would later have a powerful effect on preserving the lives of millions of God's people, the Jews in those days. You think of Joseph, who was taken from a quiet and a humble Israelite background and put as the second in command in the most powerful nation of that time. He was Pharaoh's number two, the regent and the real power behind the throne of Egypt. You think of Daniel, who spent his entire life in the palace of an unbelieving king. Daniel worked for King Nebuchadnezzar. He was the voice of reason in that pagan dynasty. And because of God's favor on his life, Daniel rose to the highest conceivable position in that palace. You think of Moses, who God saved from his mother Jochebed's care, and he was raised in Pharaoh's palace again to do a great work for God's people at the time. And so God is very much a person who can take a Christian and put them anywhere, including places where other Christians will say, well, I just don't think he should be there. Luckily, God doesn't do much consultation before he uses people and puts them where he wants to put them. He says he's going to have an eye in the palace and he's going to take certain Christians and put them where they don't fit and where they don't seem to fit or where people will not approve of them fitting there. But God says he's putting them there to act as lightning, lightning rods and he's putting them there to act as foils in the very highest places of society. I will draw souls from all walks of life to the cross in the end times. God says that he puts his people with unsaved people for future political purposes like Joseph and Daniel. So God is going to take Christians and put them right in the same filthy Washington DC that Christians think that no other Christian should be there. And I've always said the reason that that place is like that is because no other Christians are there. God is going to put people there and he says it's going to be like Joseph and Daniel. He said he's going to use some of these people to gain resources from the high up, from the wealthy. He's going to put these people in place and use them to pull resources into his kingdom. And two names that he gave me who did that very successfully are the prophet Ezra and the workman Nehemiah. God says he will also put people on high to save his people at a later time. And this is what God used Moses and Queen Esther for. At no time will this eye of God come in more handy than in the end times. These people will be used for mass salvation, mass conversions, mass protection, and also to perform key private functions that God is going to specifically reveal to them and assign them to. And so this is the end of the prophecy called programs in America, and it is from July 17, 2021. I will now read the second prophecy, which almost mirrors this one, and then I will go back to the main. Just a moment, please.
This prophecy is called Communism in America, and the very title itself sounds like a fever dream, something that could never be, but it will happen. The Lord has said, and so it shall be. Communism in America, October the 31st, 2022. And the banner scripture is this. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and 10 horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead, a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. And this is Revelation 17, three to six. And so I had done my prayers for the night, spoken to the Lord already, and I was about to go to sleep. And then he said, tell them these things from me and tell them that they will surely come to pass. There is no help anymore. America has surrendered her position. She has been taken over by the dragon. Tell them what I said. Kamala Harris is coming, and with her, some of the most dire times in U.S. history. She will be the president of this country, and there is nothing to be done about it. Tell them it will be loss of freedom and loss of life like never seen before. Tell them from me that America will never be great again, and that decline and economic rot will eat this nation from the ground up like termites. Kamala Harris is a new world order president, meaning that she is the first tangible face that you will see of the new world system. No matter what it looks like now or how the coming events are presented to you, she represents the new world order. She is not an American president. She does not serve American ideals. America's best interests or America's causes. She will not be interested in the economic betterment or the recovery of America. She is a new world last letter architect and she serves the throne of the beast. Too late, Americans will realize that she was never connected to the nation at all, but that she is connected to an entity that has already won power for itself. And I discussed this, I think, in 2022. I'm unsure of the month, but I brought forth a series of prophecies that almost, I would say, took me by surprise. The Lord went into quite a few political prophecies back to back to back. He spoke of Hillary Clinton and her husband. He spoke of Donald Trump. He spoke of Barack Obama and he spoke of Kamala Harris and the Lord made it clear to those who had ears to hear at that time that none of these people serve American interests. The Lord laid bare what the new world system is like. He said that all the people who are part of this not so hidden entity anymore, they don't serve any national interest. They are French, they're German, they're in various African countries, if not all of them. They're in South America. They're in Australia. They are all over the world, but the seat of the beast is here in the United States. And the Lord said that none of these people have any natural affection for their nation. They've already sold out their countries. They're serving a higher agenda, he said. They're serving another throne, he said. That is the God that they call God when they say, praise God. They are talking about Satan who sows carnage, destruction, and death wherever he goes. He said they have no natural affection for their country. And the ones in America, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, um, Kamala Harris, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, these are the names that God has given. Even uh, President Biden, they do not serve this country. And what the Lord revealed is a curious thing. He says when they all come into the boys club, they all think that they've been told the whole story. 
That prophecy that I'm talking about, this, is definitely called Ready Player One. There's another one also called Kamala Harris and the Beast. Um, and there's one about Trump, the one that has the ayahuasca dream at the end. I cannot remember the title of it now. But there's one prophecy on the master's voice that is not yet a video where the entire prophecy is about Donald Trump and how the Lord says that Donald Trump is the biggest idol that America has had since John F. Kennedy. Notice, he didn't say that about President Biden. He didn't say that about Barack Obama or anyone else. He says that Donald Trump is the biggest idol that Americans have ever gathered around to worship since John F. Kennedy went to his final resting place. So let that sink in. All the Marguerites, all the people who come here and try to fight me as if I literally can hear what you're saying, as if I care about your opinion above what God has said. If God says that people are worshiping that man, then God, I think, is in the perfect position to make that estimation because God knows what goes on in your heart and in your dreams while you're asleep. So if he makes that accusation, he has every right to make it, and he absolutely knows what he is talking about. And that's why I repeat his words with confidence. The man is an idol, and God says he will cut all idols down, and America will have nothing to worship and will have to reconsider if they want to worship him. And so the thing that God revealed about the beast system is that he said they come into the boys club and they think that they've been told the whole plan. So each of them is given their role to play. You will be an agent and you will be the counter agent. And therefore we see this fake back and forth and fake enmity and fake argument in the press. And the Lord says that afterwards, they all gather around and go, good job, good job, buddy. And they pat each other on the back. And he says that they don't understand that the beast is a single player only, that the beast Barack Obama tolerates no loose ends, and that all these names that I have given will meet their end by his hand. After they are done playing their role, he will dispose of them because he intends to be the last man standing. And so as the Lord was saying all these things, I saw a great dragon flying in the heavens. And the Lord said, America is under the principality of the dragon, Satan himself, Satan has taken control and established himself, and now he is going to rule from his seat in Pergamum, that's what God was calling America, with an iron fist. And here's the scripture. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, these things says he who has the sharp two-edged sword, I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, Revelation 2, verses 12 and 13. And as God was saying all this, I saw a terrible dragon with a red and black appearance flying low over America. And the dragon was roaring in dragon language. So it was roaring what seemed like a roar, but the roar was translated for me. The dragon was saying victory, victory. And he flew here and there over this nation, a red and black dragon that was extremely terrible to see. The Lord then began to talk about one of the most terrible killers in human history, a man from the nation of Cambodia called Pol Pot. The Lord said, Pol Pot was a man who killed people en masse in his own country. That's how it will be in America. War and dictatorship will kill people in great numbers. And in this way, America will pay the penalty for the wars and the brutal terrorism that she visited or carried out on others. As their children died, yours will die. As their mothers wailed, yours will wail. This is the just punishment of the Lord to the land of the serpent, America the Great, United States by name. Yah also said, tell them also this, nothing will go according to how you expect it. Nothing will happen the way that you think. All of your predictive programming and all of your presumption and assumptions will be confounded. That means greatly twisted up and confused. And he says, you will see events happening out of place and out of turn until you are emotionally exhausted. You will be worn out trying to figure things out and you will still not figure it out. 
Nothing will be kept in a straight line. Nothing will follow a regular pattern. Nothing will go the way that you think it will. In this way, I will exhaust you of your own strength until you learn to be humble. I will humble you from being experts. I will humble you from being gods who want to know and predict the future. Things will get so bad in America that your next 24 hours will become a question and a mystery that only God can solve. And then you will learn to depend on me alone or you will perish by your pride. This is very important because I'm always warning people. I'm giving the prophecy and people are like, how long do we have before this happens? And I've always asked, why do you need a date? Are you planning to pop it on your Google calendar and get ready for it? What does it matter? God says that nothing will follow a pattern. You think it's election time and it's going to turn into selection time. You think the money's going to go up, it's going to go down. You think it's going to pop down, it's going to go sideways, take a bend, and then head all the way to Las Vegas. It's not going to follow any pattern. They're going to start twisting the rules. They're going to start making things confusing. On top of that, spiritual realities will be confusing that make it impossible for events to play out in a straight line. So those who need prophecy to be very neat so that they can see if it fits in Malachi or if it fits in Habakkuk, God says that you're going to get worn out trying to figure it out and you're going to think you have it all figured out and you're going to start putting a lot of videos on your channel that are 1000 billion percent completely wrong and confusion. You're going to share your confusion with other people because you haven't figured it out, not even close. And he says that he will do it until people are emotionally exhausted, until people stop caring about what's the future going to hold because he says things in this country will come to a point where our next 24 hours, we are going to be on our knees seeking him for him to, going, for him to tell us if we're going to make it to nightfall. That is how God plans to humble a proud nation of experts to depend on him alone or perish by their pride. And so after God had said this to me, I was still awake. I had finished prayers and then this information came. I wrote it down and then I went to sleep. And the dream that I had, I said in the original video that this dream greatly distressed me. This dream distressed me because it was so real that I thought I was there. I thought the time had already come. And what's worse, I could not get out of the dream loop. I had this dream like four or five times. And every time it expanded, it had more information and it was worse. So please listen, because he said to read this dream in your hearing. And the reason I'm not skipping any parts of these dreams, no matter how long the video gets, is because in the Old Testament, the Bible records in at least Deuteronomy that periodically God would tell Moses to do the same thing. Moses would gather all the people and from early morning until the end of the day, he would read them all those hundreds of laws that were in what they call the book of the law. So it wasn't just the 10 commandments. It was all the hundreds of, I don't want you to eat this and don't mix your linen with your flax. They would stand on their feet. They stood all day from sunrise or the start of the day until in the evening. And they listened to the law. And that's exactly what God was bringing to my mind when I was preparing this, when he said, you shall read all my words in their hearing. And that means that if you've gotten tired and you need to take a break, if you need to stop and ruminate on what you've heard so far, please do that. Whether you're watching this on any of the platforms, it is highly doubtful that I'm going to cut this video up and put it anywhere. I'm just going to put a brief introduction on the different platforms or a little piece. And I'm going to say, here is the link. Whoever cares to come back and watch the full video can watch that. But this video, I am not cutting up into little pieces of SpaghettiOs for anyone, because in the future, there will be nobody to do this. In the future, we will have to have 1000% spiritual maturity and find spiritual food for ourselves. So this dream took a serious toll on me. But I went to sleep not knowing that I was going to have this dream. I just knew from what God was saying concerning the new world order and saying that America, all this, this way back, it was October 2022, saying that America has fallen to, fall into the power of the dragon. 
and that there's no hope anymore and there's nothing to be done. I knew that it was serious and so I went to bed and I dreamt that a communist way of life came to America. I saw that the leaders were not chosen by any system of votes and that nobody had to be um, affiliated to a party. You did not get to have leadership position by reason of tenure, such as they do in the Senate. The reason that people were chosen was that they had to demonstrate that they were able to stop being American, stop thinking like an American, stop caring about American things, and put the beast agenda first above all. So in the future, nobody cares about America. I've already said that God showed me that America is going to be replaced by something called the North American Federation. America is going to be joined to Canada at the top and at least Mexico and South, in fact, all of South America at the bottom and the entirety of the continent will form one zone or one nation and the name for it was the North American Federation and they will have a new flag and they will have new money. And this is something that the Lord was just saying to me a few weeks ago and saying that many Christians and also just many Americans, you're going to be in, in mental torment because he said that your God is the red, white, and blue. That America, the entity, that means the nation and everything that it represents inside your mind is a God to you. And he said, how terrible for them when their God is torn to pieces and replaced by a new nation that you have not known, you will never hear this national anthem again. You will never see the flag again. Everything that you consider a special American institution is going to be taken away and you're going to be given this new, bulky, unfamiliar amalgam that you hate and you will have to hate it in silence because if you hate it out loud, your life expectancy is going to drop to point minus zero. And that is why Christians, if you actually come here to receive anything worthwhile, you will understand why the Bible says that Abraham was looking for a country whose builder and city was God. Abraham didn't, didn't focus on where he came from in Babylonia, Ur of the Chaldees. And he wasn't even so much focused on this Canaan land that God had given him and told him, walk the breadth and the length of the land, claim it, put your feet on it. Abraham was looking for that beautiful country that it doesn't tell us much about what God revealed to Abraham sovereignly, but Abraham was looking towards that better place that he will surely get to get into now that he has passed on in right standing with his God. So if America is your God, even if you're a Christian, you're going to enter the same torment as all the patriots will enter. They will die fighting for this entity that is already dead. Isn't that so confounding? The country is judged but the patriots will die for a nation that God says it's going to the bottom of the sea. What a way to go. What a way to waste your life. But then each man's life is his own. And men being men, they must do what they must. So if you love anything more than God, if you love this country more than God, you're going to see the country torn apart and you're going to be ruled, the, um, this prophecy was saying, by leaders who won't be chosen by any kind of electoral process. So those who look forward to casting the ballot, having their say, that's going away. Leaders will be chosen by how much loyalty they can show the beast system. How loyal can they be to put the beast agenda first and stop being and thinking like Americans? Loyalty to the new system was all that was required to rise rapidly in that robotic new style of government. So what I saw is that people who you normally wouldn't choose because they don't have the kind of charm that John F. Kennedy had, the kind of charm that Bill Clinton had, the kind of charm that Obama showed people, people who lack charm, people who lack people skills, people who lack being eloquent, people basically who had no, nothing to commend them, the kind of people that we would never choose in an election because they don't win the hearts, so to speak. Those people shot to the highest position in the new government because those people were single-minded and they didn't care about America. Just like I've told you in many prophecies that this country is filled with people who spy for Russia, 
They spy for China. They do not care about America. They sell secrets. They sell medical records. They sell home addresses. They sell social security numbers. They sell everything. And I said this years ago, and no matter how many times these people are caught in the news, some of them right in the military, people just blithely continue on with life and keep saying that these messages are not true. How interesting. People who lacked anything that would have qualified them from holding public office, I saw that nevertheless they shot to powerful positions as the new government established itself. Favors and job positions were handed out based on who you knew. That is called nepotism, giving your friends a leg up, pushing people up because of camaraderie and friendship instead of merit. Or if the new government specifically called a citizen to work for it, that citizen had to report for duty. And that's how it went. There was no personal loyalty in this new government that I saw. You could be just as easily extinguished. That means killed, not fired. You could be extinguished from within the structure just as quickly as you entered the structure. And so the general attitude was exactly as it was in the medieval courts of the kings where you needed to have your allies and your spies and your courtiers who would carry rumors for you and destroy another person's, another person's career. The general attitude was take nothing for granted and watch your back. I began to see billboards and flags and other print media representations of Kamala Harris being raised all over the USA. Posters of her face, banners of her face, flyers of her face, the kind of bills that they post on the wall with, you know, with glue and stuff like that. Everywhere, over the White House, on all buildings that had to do with the government, this is the state houses, the governor's mansions, council houses, the courtrooms, anywhere that government members met or sat or lived. Kamala Harris was represented there. There was either a photo of her there or a poster or a flag. And it reminded me of seeing photos, posters, and flags of Chairman Mao all over China, except that in America, the fear and the unrest that this caused was greater than anything that has ever happened in China. And that's because Chinese people are long accustomed to a certain style of leadership but Americans have never seen it before in their lives. And so a great terror came upon this country when such things as posting the president's face over every surface began to happen. And that fear was so great that in the dream, it poured into me as well. I had about six dreams. Each dream started the same, and then the body of the dream turned out different. So each time the dream started with me standing on a street, having a very wide panoramic view of some neighborhood here in America. And even though I was only standing on one street and one neighborhood, somehow God made it possible for me to see the whole country. And so every time this dream started, I saw a big flag, a very big flag of Kamala Harris go up with her smiling face on it. It was raised right up into the air until it was over the whole country. And then after that, I began to see people going out and plastering her posters on the wall and unfurling huge polymer billboards from the sides of buildings and handing out flyers to people that were walking on the street. So these polymer billboards are these very large banners, very, very large banners. And you take them to the top of these high buildings and then you secure them to a part of the building and then you roll it down over the side of the building. And so there's this massive advertising banner and people do that when they have a lot of money for advertising. But every single time these banners were rolled down over the building, it was Kamala Harris's face basically hanging on the side of some massive building. And we were walking by that and every time this massive flag went up into the sky, fear struck the entire nation. And I felt that fear. In fact, it was past fear. It was dread. The feeling, if you could put it into words, was, oh no, oh no, this can't be happening. This is not good at all. Dread filled our bones like lead. And even though I was asleep, that feeling kept pouring into me and that's what made this dream so difficult. 
In the first dream, the army was in the street, massively deployed against the citizens for reasons that I don't know in detail. I saw pandemonium and fighting, and I saw people resisting in groups here and there, little pockets of resistance, but the majority of people were fleeing every which way. And I saw the US forces, this is government, this is, I mean, not this is the army, this is whoever else that the government deploys, whoever are soldiers. I saw that they were grabbing people right off the street for detention on false charges. And again, when I go back to the main prophecy, you will hear this mentioned because the Lord is extremely consistent in his words. People were grabbed on false charges, immediate detention with no lawyer and no bail. And I also saw that they were hunting certain people down to kill them in no uncertain terms. The order against these people was find them and exterminate them. No questions asked. It was fear in America to the point that I, without hesitation, saw which way the wind was blowing. And I fled to my parents' house with a friend of mine. And I came into my parents' house and I was trying to enter quietly because my mother, I think she was entertaining, so she didn't know that I was there. And we came up, it was a high house, so we came up to like the third floor. And when we looked out the window, this friend and I, we saw a terrible, terrible, terrible storm was raging across America. I mean, angry water that was spoiling the parks, breaking up things in the park and spoiling the marinas. And the sea around America was so angry. Excuse me, please. The sea around the United States was so angry that it was choppy, very choppy everywhere that I looked. And the outside scene was basically as if you were inside a dishwasher watching that. And I said to my friend, I'll die first before I let these people catch me. I will die taking my chances with the Lord rather than be one of these that have been targeted to get caught. And so I was, I was contemplating how to get outside that window. And my mother came in and she came and found me. I think I was either standing on the ledge or investigating how to open this window. And she came in and she said, sweetheart, what are you doing? Why are you going through that window? And the concern in my mother's voice was so great that I could not do it. I, I just said, oh, you know, um, because I couldn't say to her, this is what is written here from the dream. I couldn't say, well, I'm wanted and I'm hiding for my life and I think I'm willing to jump out a third story window to avoid capture and ask God to give me nimble hands and to get down this three-story building. I just made up some excuse to calm her and the dream ended. I dreamt it again. The flag rose up over America and a horrible fear came over me. Just a moment, please. Pardon the noise. So this fear, it was the collective fear of the nation watching the changes happening, paralyzing and powerful sweeping changes that completely changed the America that we knew. We had never had a dictator before. We didn't even know what that meant. We didn't know why they were giving us rations. We didn't know why we could no longer go where we wanted, when we wanted. People were being restricted to stay in the area that they came from. We were heavily restricted in our movements and in who we could be affiliated with. And because the new laws were so sweeping and so difficult to comply with, many people felt that it was not worth it to keep ties with their rebellious family and friends anymore. People who did not want to obey this new regime, people who did not want to accept Kamala Harris as president and this new form of government. A ton of people cut ties with their family. They decided it wasn't wor worth it. They were not going to stay tied to rebellious people. I've spoken of the patriot people that God always calls the sons of, the sons of freedom, people who will take up arms to fight against this new world um, government that will arise, people who will not want to accept the new world that is going to include social credit score and having to report to mandatory centers to have your mental wellness checked and talked with AI. All these things are in various videos and I would ask that you simply make the time and look on the playlists and start to become up to date with these things. I saw that people cut all associations with their family 
in order to show the government that they were loyal. So as I saw Kamala Harris's flag start to go up as the, at the start of each dream and her billboards began to fall down the sides of buildings, in this second dream, I thought, hmm, Chairman Mao, Chairman Mao did this. His face was everywhere in China, reminding the people who was their Lord and God. And I was frozen to see such blatant propaganda in America. You couldn't go anywhere without seeing this woman's face. And I was so disheartened by all the changes that came in when she came to power and how they changed the country during her rule. I said, if America, who's known for freedom, if America can do this, then there is no hope for anyone. I had the third dream. Kamala Harris's big flag began to rise. And by now, I realize that I am in a dream loop. A dream loop is where God will just keep showing you the same dream again, but because he's God, he was changing this one. And every time it was going somewhere different. The first time they were hunting people. The second time um, he was focusing on the fact that the government propaganda was so much and how we were restricted in our movements and who we were, who we could be affiliated with, who was safe to be affiliated with. I have already prophesied here since 2021 that America is going to become a nation of borders, that every single state is going to be shut up like a cell in the body, and you are going to need papers, whether it's the passport, whether it's the real ID, you're going to need some kind of papers to cross from one state to the other. You are also going to need a good reason for your visit and to tell the people, the border authorities, when you will be coming back to your designated area, your designated zone. People are going to be confined to the place that they came from. And so in the third dream, as the flag began to rise, I realized that I was in a dream loop. So I saw the first big flag that rises over the country. And once it's up over the whole country, then people begin to go out handing out flyers and people began to post her face everywhere. And then there was a flag that was pulled up at half mast, at full mast over the White House. And then God said, Pol Pot will come to America. Cambodia will come to America. Extermination and death by government. Ask your friends about it. And I looked down at the streets and I saw blood flowing, blood, blood, blood rolling downhill, sometimes sitting in the open sun, drying to caked and dried black ground in the summer heat. And that is exactly what I had seen nearly a year previous in the July, in fact, more than a year in the July 2021 dream that I just read for you now. I said, Lord, I don't want to be in this dream. I want to come out, Lord but I could not come out. Instead, I continued to see blood appearing on the streets of the United States. It was mass murder extermination. And they took people in the night mostly, especially in the beginning. Just a moment, please. I saw that it was mass murder and extermination. It was very well run and it was orchestrated. If you remember the first dream, I said that the government is going to be in charge of this thing called pogroms and they're going to be doing it and getting resources from private companies. And I saw that when they started, they used to do it at night, especially in the beginning. So you would have a neighbor there the night before and when you woke up, that person would be gone with no word as to where they had gone. An entire family being taken at night while the neighbors were looking through the curtains with the lights off to appear as if they were asleep. But all the while, the mother and father in one house were looking through the darkened curtains of their house and they saw another family on the street in bathrobes and bedtime slippers being marched off and that family was never seen again and in america it was given a name and that name is midnight dread this is what this act of stealing people at night came to be called midnight dread and as a result of this some people refuse to sleep in their homes anymore they refuse to have any last known locations associated with them so last known 
locations, quote fingers, is a place where everyone knows this is Celestial's address. She lives here. This is Bob's address. He lives there. Some people completely abandoned those places and they refused to have any one location where they knew that people knows he lives here or she lives there. They became nomadic. They slept in different places all the time. And I saw that some fathers even broke their family up at night to give the family better chances of survival. Because if one family is in one house and they come and get all of you, they will exterminate that whole family. I saw that some men broke the family up at night. Some people went with dad, some people went with mom, so that the family would have a better chance of survival. I also saw a great disparity of thoughts in America. We know that this exists already. We can already see the hatred and the deep divides that people have here in the United States in terms of how they think and how they see things and groups cannot agree. There's the straight versus the gay versus the trans versus the so-called black and the black and the whites and the different things. Well, this thing became so pronounced. And the reason it became pronounced is because America came under existential threat. People behave very differently when they know that it's either their life or yours. All their civility goes away. All their human compassion goes away. Now you understand why the Bible says in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves. This is why you understand why Jesus said that one of the, one of the key markers to know you are in the final times is that the natural love of man will grow cold. Now that you're watching it grow cold, you cannot deny what times we are in. So, when the nation came under existential threat, once it becomes known that there are people out there coming to houses and grabbing people and carrying out citizen arrest orders, as I spoke of earlier, people changed. Some people rose to the occasion of the landscape, the new landscape that we were living in, like champions. They had been taught all their lives never to trust the government. They were taught this by their parents. They were taught this by their grandparents. They were taught this by their teachers and other influential people in their lives to play the game when the government plays fair, but to not be disappointed or mad at all when the government doesn't play fair. These people were raised to have an expectation that the reason the constitution includes the right to bear arms is because lawmakers in the 1700s understood that sometimes governments go crazy, they go corrupt, they become killers, and then the people should have the right to remove and replace them. Just for me saying this sentence, in that future time, it will be called sedition, and a person can be put to death for that. It will be said that the person is inciting rebellion against the state, and that person's life can be lost. So if you needed a real-time example of what I'm talking about, just that statement that I said before, that the Constitution gives people the right to self-defense and to form armed militias as a response to governments gone rogue for saying that fact that everybody learns in school, that will be seen as sedition, the act of inciting people to rise against and rebel against a sitting government. So these people had been taught all their lives that the government can play fair and when it plays fair, you play fair. But when it doesn't play fair, don't be mad and don't be disappointed. Don't expect the government to do more than governments do. In other words, you can love America, but don't expect anything from the government. When the government is just, you be just. When the government is right, then you be right too. But the minute it stops being these things, these people were taught, break rank, lose hell, and take care of your own. So I saw that there was a contingent of people in America who, talk, who thought like this, a ton of them, and they were scattered all over the nation, but they were mostly concentrated in certain areas. And God was showing me that these are also usually the type of people who are self-sufficient. They can grow their own food. You'll never find them at the welfare office. They never accept any kind of government handout, payout, nothing. You offer it, they don't want it. They're not poor, some of them are poor, but either way, they don't trust the government fully. And so in this dream, when the government pulled off its mask and changed, these people were 100% not shocked. They were not sad. They were not having strokes and they were not sad about anything. I saw them sitting on their porch and saying things like, told you, told you, 
It's a corporation. That's what they were saying as people were walking by in front of their homes, looking stressed out and scared. They didn't care one bit about what was happening in the cities. People were being put to death in cities for the most ridiculous and manufactured reasons that you can think of. Those people, God was showing me, never loved America as much as they loved their freedom, their guns, their dogs, their pets, their families. So they were not at all shocked when a regime government appeared because deep down they never expected anything different. Here are the people who were really shocked. Here are the people who couldn't process what was happening. Students, professors, educated people, the experts in all the different fields, the learn, learned citizens, people who had a lot of degrees and letters after their name, people who learned about America from books that they studied in school, where America is the one describing herself in those books because she wrote them. These people did not learn about the nation from paying attention to reality and history. The majority of such people were shocked to the bone and they suffered great loss of life because they were not prepared, because they suffered deep disappointment that the entity they believed in in their mind could do such things like this in real life. They suffered loss of life because of their blank refusal to accept what was happening and because of mass cognitive dissonance. It was like two different Americas God was showing me responding to the same catastrophe, but because of the difference in their thinking, one group did much better than the other. After that third dream, I didn't want to go back to bed. And so I stayed awake for two hours fighting sleep. And during that time, God put it to use. He began to tell me about the man Pol Pot. God said that Pol Pot was a merciless dictator who exterminated his own people for his own reasons. This man was extremely paranoid. He saw enemies everywhere and his style of governance, if we can call it that, was by consolidating power through preemptive strike. I've spoken of preemptive strike before. Preemptive strike is where you see an enemy and you think, well, you're an enemy and I'm going to get you before you get me. And so Pol Pot struck all his political enemies before they could strike him. He killed and buried all of them. And once he got rid of them, he began to see enemies in the people. And so he decided that all people who were related to the government leaders and the political opponents that he had killed or anyone who might have liked them. And then he widened it to anyone who might have supported them were probably also dangerous too. And so Pol Pot got rid of them as well. From there, the chain of the people that he killed just got wider and wider until millions were murdered by this man in just a few short years. It is estimated that this man killed about 25% of Cambodians, Cambodia's population in only five years. It is estimated that between 1.5 and 2 million people were killed in just five years. The Khmer Rouge were some of the most dangerous and sadistic forces ever seen in Southeast Asia, God informed me. And he said that the coming system that is going to rule America will be just like that. So this information was just sort of coming up as I was trying to stay awake because I didn't want to go back in that dream. And the Lord was telling me, Celestial, government killing is the worst kind of killing because the government can abuse two things that most civilians don't have, authority and guns. Governments have all the authority and most of the guns and while citizens do have the right to possess weapons, most choose not to own them. This is therefore a situation, he said, that greatly favors the government. The Lord also spoke of the nation of Vietnam. And he said Vietnam also exterminated its own people over a very long series of years. Many, many millions of people were killed by a regime government until they had to run to other countries to survive. Yah said that human extermination and, dis and extinction has always been Satan's main goal. And if anyone doesn't understand this about what drives Satan, 
and what Satan's motivation are, is, what his motivations are, then that God says that that person is living in a very loose version of reality. He said, if you don't know your enemy, you are at the mercy of that enemy because no matter what you think reality is, your enemy knows the real reality and therefore he has an advantage over you. The Lord said to tell you, America, these things are from the I am who is perfect. They shall certainly be, whether you believe them or not. But know that when they come to pass, that it was revealed to you what the end of America would be. A regime, government, a rogue government under sway to the beast and the dragon who gave him his throne. And the scripture he gave was this. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his head a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. Revelation 13, 1 to 3. And so, the seat of the beast is Mystery Babylon, that throne where Satan and his beast will rule from. And the scripture is this, Then he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns that you saw on the beast, they will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. And so here are the prophecies that mirror these two prophecies. Pogroms in America, tanks in America, a new government for America, Nazis in America, part one, two, and three. And this one that came at the end of the In America series called Communism in America. I will now go back to the dream that the Lord gave me on July the 14th, 2023, that is entitled, They Will Have Nothing. You are with Celestial of the Master's Voice, and I'm reading the prophecy, They Will Have Nothing, July 14th, 2023, where the Lord has been saying that the entire entity known as the United States of America is going to absolutely change its face it's going to be nothing like we expect. First, he started off by speaking of an economic crisis, that there's going to be staggering of economies and total collapse. And then he went into the fact of reminding America that his word would not fail, that there is going to be mass death coming here through a system that is known in our modern times as the New World Order, but in the Bible as the beast system. And God says that his word that has gone forth from his mouth will not return to him empty, but it will accomplish the purpose that he sent it for and do what he pleases. The next part of this prophecy is called forced labor and detention camps. The new world system is a system of labor without wages to benefit the state. Wages are the result of a free market economy where people sell their skills and their strength in return for money to buy goods and services. So this is the Lord speaking to me now. But he asked, what happens when the state is the sole provider of all the goods and services and makes those things available to you for free? What happens when the rent is free and when school is free and healthcare is free and food is declared a human right and provide it to you for a very minimal cost. What happens when goods and services are all socialized, meaning, meaning that they are made freely available to the greatest amount of people at no apparent cost? And here's the last question that God asked. Do you understand that everything has a cost? So what happens when we transition out of this system where you have to work, you have to trade your strength and your skills, and your gifts and your talents, and then you receive a salary, you receive wages, 
And with the wages, you participate in what's known as a free market economy where you have the right to choose the goods that you want and the services that you want. And based on how much money you have available, your access to better and better or lesser and lesser services either goes up with wealth or down with less available resources. God is saying, what, what happens when they bring in a flat line system? What happens when they bring in universal ba basic income? What happens when rent is being taken care of by the state? What happens when they're taking care of your kids' school fees? And they're taking care of everything. And it seems as if you're being offered a life of utopia at no cost. The question that he asks is, do you understand that everything has a cost? And the answer to that is, the cost will not be revealed to you until too late, until you've already bought in, if you are unwise, until you've already said, this is great. Now I don't have to go to work because I'm being given credits for basically doing a set amount of tasks. Eventually, God says, what seems like utopia is going to be flipped on us. The next thing he said is the new order has its own camps, forced detention. Citizens will be rounded up on false pretenses and made to work in labor camps as part of a re-education program. So the best dream for this is, goodness me. It's the dream about Donald Trump where I said that at the end, um, I shared a dream where I, I found myself in a camp and I thought that I was there for work, but I was not. I was in a camp where the food was regularly being dosed with this powerful hallucinogenic um, that almost everybody seems to be getting into very unwisely called ayahuasca. Um, I didn't know the name of that because I'd never seen that thing before. And I said that in the dream when I was running away, I saw it written in very large letters on the wall of the hallway as I was running past. And so it looked like something else to me. But um, I later found out that the name of the drug that was being put in the food for people in that death camp was ayahuasca and it kept them quiet and docile enough and satisfied with the life we all had a room and we had tv and we took walks and there was always food there and there were different types of recreation i saw at this mid-level kind of low budgety motel hotel thing and we were living there and the lord opened my eyes in that dream and i saw that in every room was a red light a red lamp hiding behind a two-way um, dimensional mirror where we could be watched but it looked like a window and we didn't know we were being watched and so God has spoken about the fact that they will put people to death in those camps and he said that up to the very moment that people are killed they will not know that they were in a camp. And he said that this is the thing with my people. He was speaking of the church. He wasn't just speaking of people generally. He was saying, this is the thing with my people is that they don't listen and you can't tell them anything. And he said that if you try to warn people that they are in a death camp, they will say, what are you talking about, Celestial? Have you ever seen a death camp that has free food and a pool and 24 hour cable and Netflix? and we don't have to pay rent or we don't have to pay any bills to be in here. The Lord spoke of FEMA and he said that when these major disasters that are on the way hit, FEMA will use this as an opportunity to tell people, oh, we're offering relief here and relief there. And he says that people don't know that they're going into camps and they're not, they're not going to come out. And he said that one of the reasons people will be put into camps is for re-education. So this is for all the resistors. This is for all the people that he says, you will be put in there. People will be put in there on charges of sedition, which I just explained is inciting people to, re to rebel against a sitting authority. People will be put in these camps for non-conforming. This is, you don't want to follow the new rules. You don't want to listen to the new government. People will be put in there for acts of violence. You start to do guerrilla warfare. You start to do resistance and rebellion, planting bombs at the various New World Order government offices or anything like that. If you're caught for those types of tactics, if you're caught speaking out against the new government or any other act that is seen as illegal, you will be put in these re-education camps. And 
it is not likely that people will be allowed to leave those camps alive anyway. And the Lord says that there's going to be an ever evolving penal code. What does that mean? It means we have a set bunch of laws and you can pretty much sit down and learn what they are and become familiar with the laws that govern your nation. But what happens is in the new beast system, as I've just explained in two dreams, everything could be a potential illegal act. They will add more and more and more and more ridiculous um, crimes to the list until we're never sure. We're never sure what's a crime. This this leads to a very um, fear-filled, unnatural state where you don't know what is what and you don't know where to put your feet. There's no certainty. This kind of thing greatly wears and tears on people. This type of non non-stop stress and now you understand why the bible says of the devil in the final days that he will think to change the times and laws this is indicative of the system that is coming the king of fierce features who understands dark sayings one of the things he will try to do is to change the times and laws another thing that it says that satan will be busy doing in those days is wearing out the saints this is Revelation and chapter three. And so when these types of things are pressing on people, God says the laws will be greatly expanded and there will be new crimes on the books. Things that were never considered illegal will be made illegal, while things that burn the human conscience will be freely allowed and even praised. And so this is all the naked people. The naked people will have their day. And when that day comes, I would like to see all the people who come to the blog now and complain that the images are too graphic and the prophecies are too graphic. Won't it be very interesting on the day that America hosts its first gay pride, pedophile pride, bestiality pride right in your town, going right past your window, naked men, naked women, naked children, all the barnyard friends walking with them through their neighborhood. And you see that. What a set of graphic images. I'd like to hear from you at that time. Be very interested to know what your thoughts are concerning nudity and things that burn the out eye gates happening outside in reality where you will be powerless to affect them since you seem to think that the word of the Lord that comes here is so inflammatory that you can't bear it and yet you will bear a reality that is one million times more distressing for the human soul. So, things that are unconscionable will be freely allowed. This is the bestiality that will be legalized. This is the pedophilia that will be legalized. This is the sex with fallen angels and the Nephilim that will be praised and everybody will be trying to get themselves an angel boyfriend, male or female will be trying to get that in the future times. This is taking off your body parts and having them replaced in transhumanist surgeries that people will be lining up and using their government credits to pay for. Meanwhile, things that we have always had that have never been considered illegal, like church, will be outlawed. I said in the prophecy, the man of sin, that it, would became, it became illegal to pray to any god. And the people who suffered most were Judaism, Christianity, and the Muslims, the three groups that love to pray to their one God. So church will be illegal. Congregating for the purpose of anything religious will be illegal. It will be a death crime to be found praying. And I always said that to people who don't know how to pray wisely in those days, if you don't shut your bedroom and your atheist child sees you and dials it into the new world order, well, don't say that you never heard anywhere that wisdom is proven by her children. The Lord says, you will do forced labor in camps and no one will be paid for the jobs they will do. The job will be compulsory and the penalty for not showing up for work is death. It will be like the days of old. And here is the example God gave, slavery in the United States compulsory labor it was with no pay and the penalty for not doing the work well enough or to quota was to be beaten so severely that sometimes people suffered terrible injuries and sometimes people died depending on how severe the punishment or injury being inflicted on the slave was 
Slavery was forced labor for no pay and the penalty for failing to meet your assigned level of work was severe injury or death. And God says that that will come back to America as it was before, so it will be again. He says, you're working now and you have job security and pensions. In the future, the pension system will be dissolved. There will be no support from the government and you will not be having any access to your past wages that the government was supposedly storing up for your old age. There will be no social security in America. It will be done away with and a new system of money, wages, how people earn and how people store up will come in. There will be no security for the old and no security for those who are close to retirement. I will tear the net of money and many millions of you will fall through. Only those who are rich in faith will hold on and not be carried to the hellscape that is already forming below you. And so God has already said in multiple prophecies, the bank prophecies from the beginning of this year when I was reluctantly brought back by God from my break are extremely revealing and telling. God was giving me a lot of information about things that I don't necessarily understand in depth concerning what the banks are doing and how all the banks will fail. Do not be fooled and think that because they stopped one or two and it looked like the whole thing was shaking and now they propped it up and they said, we're good to go. Do not be fooled by that. As I said, in the beginning parts of this prophecy, the rot, God says, is total and the entire system is going to collapse. That means that the biggest banks, the chases of the world and the city banks of the world and the Bank of Americas of the world, they are all going to go down. God says that all the banks will fail. And I guess at the time they fail is when they will use that opportunity, the deliberate opportunity that I mentioned at the beginning, that is when they will use that opportunity to bring in and birth their new system because they will use the failure to tell us, do you see the times are changing? It's a new age. We can't bank the way we used to. We no longer just want your pin code. What's a pin code and a passcode? Those are childish forms of security. We're gonna need a thumbprint and a retina scan and some saliva and your whole palm. All these things I have spoken about in 2021 and years previous, they're all written on the blog, some of them since 2019, the beast prophecies. And so that new system is going to come in and God says the new system is going to offer no security for old people. You've worked hard and you've saved your money and you think that your pension is going to keep paying out. The government is literally going to swallow that money and tell you that there's no more social security. So even the people who are working now, he says people who are on their way to retirement, you're in your fifties, your sixties, you've been putting all this money away and you're expecting it. It's not going to be there that financial crash will wipe out everything that you thought you would have in old age. And so it's time to pivot. And the way to pivot is not toward Bloomberg and the Fed. It's best to pivot to Jesus because Jesus has an impeccable track record of looking after old people. Look at all the old people that he looked after in the Bible until the day of their burial. God loves older people if they also love him. He is kind to them because he knows that they are at the apex of their years, they don't have the same strength and they don't have the same stamina and they don't have the same nerves that can put up with the stuff that younger people can put up with. And so it is time to pivot to God, to seek his face for what those years will be like. I will tear the net of money and many millions of you will fall through. Only those who are rich in faith will hold on and not be carried to the hellscape already forming below. And I will just briefly share a dream that I saw where the financial crash happened and I saw that there was a very big house that was taking care of people. It might be a real house, but I think this is just indicative of the times that there will be places that are helping people who are very negatively impacted by that thing. And I came to that place and I saw that people were just coming with a few belongings, whatever they had, whatever they could carry. And I was welcomed and I was told, you know, just, you know, find a place celestial and settle down. And so I was walking through this house and looking around and I saw a friend that I know there and she was with her two daughters and I came across this massive hole, such a huge rip in the building that went all the way down. The building was only several floors above. This rip went down so many levels as if it was going into the center of the earth. And there was so much 
boiling, rippling heat coming out of that place. It was literally like a gash showing you into hell. And I said that I looked in that hole and I became overcame by the heat. I was overcome by the heat and dizzy and also filled with so much fear because of what was in that hole. And there were people in that hole. There were people wandering around in that hellish hot place. People who had fallen through the cracks, people who had, had received the terrible tail end, the hardest strike when the economy collapsed. And they were in that hole just milling around and I was feeling so guilty and I was thinking perhaps I should go into the hole and help. There was a very thin ladder there, so rickety and thin going all the way down to the bottom. And as I was thinking this, the friend was seated there and said, get away from that hole right now. None of the women go into that hole. Only the men occasionally go down there and they try to help as they can, but there's not much they can do. And so when God says the hellscape that is forming and that he will rip the net of money, God already said that one of the biggest gods in America is money, that people love money, they worship it. They would do their own mother dirty for money. And so he says that he will cancel that God and rip the net of money and people will fall through because everything in their life is about their money and about their swag and about showing off what they have. And when things like this happen, money will cease to be important and people will be forced to find other ideals. And one of the greatest ideals that you can cling to is the truth of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The net ripped and I saw millions of people falling through into the hole. But then when the net flapped, both sides were hanging like that. I saw many people clinging to the net and looking down. They were not afraid. They were holding on. And I knew that these people were Christians not the fair weather Christians, not the fake ones who are always, always asking me on these multiple platforms. Well, doesn't the Bible say this? And doesn't the Bible say that? I want to let you know, once you have to say, doesn't the Bible say this? It already tells me that you don't actually know the scripture. And if you know one scripture, you're not actually able to marry it to its counterpart in the Bible so that they make a whole sentence and they make sense for you. And that's why I don't bother to answer. If at this late stage, people are asking, but doesn't it say this? And you're not actually taking the time to form a powerful living relationship with Jesus Christ. Then I already know there's no point stopping to answer you anything because there's an ending in one of these prophecies for you. And it doesn't do to waste my time and energy. You will learn soon enough. Experience is after all the best teacher. The last part of this prophecy, you will have collapsible money. Collapsible means something that can fall down quickly. It can easily be removed or it can be restored to its original form. So just think of those folding camping chairs or those folding plastic tables. You easily fold it up. It's a collapsible table, easily folded away, easily brought back to its original form. That's the kind of money God says we will have. And that's exactly what digital money is when you think about it. You can easily be debited and you can easily be credited. And the source that will be doing all this debiting and crediting has nothing to do with us. When we go through this transition, debiting and crediting will be happening from the government side, not from our side. We will have nothing to do with the transaction. Collapsible. Your bank account can be shut down. Your savings can be lost. And God says they will be lost. You are working now and you are storing up, but you're doing all that to put it into a bag with holes. I will blow it away because of your corruption, because of your sinfulness, because of your bold arrogance, and because of your refusal to call me Lord. Of all the sentences, what a powerful statement for God to say to a country that insists, insists it is a Christian nature, nation, and God says, you refuse to call me Lord. Collapsible money basically means, I've always said it, that in the future with the social credit score, if somebody hears you saying the kinds of things that I've said in this video, for instance, They'll just tell on you and you will wake up and find that all your credits, whatever you had 3000, you had 30,000 of them. You would have been hit so hard with a fine. This is 
without asking you. They won't send you an email or call. They won't call you to a hearing to say, so-and-so said that you said this, and we're calling to give you a chance to explain yourself if you have any evidence that you didn't say it. That's the time to bring this evidence and provide this evidence. Nothing. You will wake up. They would have already adjudicated you on the evidence of one witness without any rebuttal that you are guilty. And once they say that you are guilty, you're going to get hit with that fine. You're going to find your collapsible money removed. You're going to be debited whether you did it or not. And that person who snitched on you will definitely be credited a portion of their lie against you for being a good citizen. And so that is what God is saying. He will blow away America's money because America is corrupt and sinful and boldly arrogant. And America refuses to call him Lord. Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, I said. You do not even call me Lord. You call me a myth, a fairy tale. You say I am a made up being that has been made up to scare children into being good. You are an apostate nation, a nation of dead faith. You are a shame to the ones who came before you. For even though they were sinful, they had faith and they believed in me. They feared me. They knew who I was. They believed in me but were sinners. They believed in God, but they did wickedly, and their sins will be visited upon their generations in accordance with my word. The soul that sins shall die. The wages of sin is death. Cursed is the man who commits murder. I will judge to the third and fourth generations of my enemies. It has always been this way. This is the word of the Lord. This is the full prophecy that I have received from the Lord today. They will have nothing July the 4th, 2023, integrated with two prophecies, pogroms in America, July 17, 2021, and communism in America, October 31st, 2022. I have also given many prophecies throughout the body of this video. And if you have any questions, all you have to do is rewind the tape. If you did not hear something, it behooves you, rewind the tape. This is the modern era, and this is why God is having me use the tools of my generation so that people can have an understanding of what is being done here. And so, I am Celestial, and this is the Master's Voice. And before I end this prophecy, I will make a brief announcement here. I have made it many times. And yet this matter continuously has to be addressed. I'm going to make a separate video for it and I'm going to pin it up on my welcome video for a while so that new people know what this is. If you've listened to the full of this prophecy, you've listened to 10 minutes, you've listened to the whole thing, you should be able to tell by now that the work I'm doing here is wonderfully and fearfully made by the Lord Jesus Christ. The commission that God has given me is distinct from what most Americans are used to. Most Americans are used to some play back and forth system whereby the person claims to be a prophet and then sits and chats with them. And that person is then moved and swayed by the chatter that goes on in the comment section and the various messenger boards. But I made it clear from the very beginning when I started this work in 2019 in written form and in 2020 in video form that that is not the status here. Another thing I have made clear is that the Lord commissioned me separately on purpose and alone for this work. He did not tell me that he was sending me a buddy or a helper. Therefore, I am saying again that I do not want to see people touching, especially the written prophecies. It is highly offensive to me when you do that because the written prophecies are my scroll. They are my scroll. They are not our scroll. The scroll is given to me to read out to those who will hear. It is not a fun glue and paper project for various people out there to think of helping themselves to. 
taking the work and doing various things about it. And then so bold, so confident, and so rude that after they have done it, then they give me a backhand contact and say, oh, but I, I just thought I should let you know what I'm doing. Do not touch the master's voice prophecy blog, especially the written blog. You are touching my eye and you are touching the Lord's eye. Keep your hands off that blog. That is my scroll. The ones who came before me never had to deal with this kind of blatant disrespect. Nobody ever went into Isaiah's house and took his role. Nobody ever went to Ezekiel's house and took his role. But this nation has no fear of God, no respect, claims, oh, hi, I'm a Christian. I just wanted to let you know that I'm doing things behind your back and I didn't have the basic courtesy to ask your permission or let you know about it first. You are touching my eye and you are touching a very sore place in me. The blog is locked because people steal. And I addressed that two years ago. So whether you are new, new or old, whether you think you have an idea or project, I am not a project. And these prophecies, if you have ears to hear, are not a project. Do not touch the master's voice prophecy blog. It is not a toy. It is not something for you to start working with without letting me know, without asking. Some people ask, and the minute they ask, it puts to shame those who presume and don't ask, who disrespect me and can't give me the courtesy of an email or to ask permission. Don't do it. Do not do it. I will not keep repeating myself on this matter. Everything is freely provided. It is countless man hours. I said to the Lord today, I know they say count the cost, but I stopped counting long ago because I don't know how long it's going to take and I don't know how exactly far it's going to go unless God is telling you what his vision for this blog is and he's contacting you going over my head to let you know that you are getting the baton to continue running with something that has cost me 11 years of my life. Do not touch this work again. If you don't have the courtesy to ask, then consider that you don't have the permission to touch it. I'm speaking specifically of the written words. Because if other people can ask, so can you. And you know exactly who I'm speaking to. You out there. Before I locked the blog, I'm finding that people in as far afield as Colombia have taken, a woman took 40 of the prophecies and put them up on her Facebook page. They've been up since COVID. She styled herself as a person who was prophesying to people in her nation. She, she literally lifted the text of the blog and had 40 of the prophecies on her Facebook page with no name, no title, no sign that she got them from anywhere. And people thought she was receiving these words from God. People, you play a very dangerous game. I constantly say that we're going back to Old Testament. That means that the God of the Old Testament is using his Old Testament eye to watch people. But there's no fear of God in people. They claim Christianity just as a little sticker badge on the chest. And they don't know that if we're going back to Old Testament times and Old Testament watching, that means Old Testament judgment is going to follow Old Testament acts of transgression against God and the person that he has sent to do this work that is bringing such heavy words to mothers, fathers, teens, young people. Don't do it. America, you don't know when to stop crossing the line. Do not do it. I don't care what country you're in when you're hearing this part. You are touching my eye and the Lord's eye. If you won't have respect for me, you can have respect for him. With video, it's different. I've said that anyone can share the videos. Even if you're going to take the whole video, which I'm not a fan of because people are simply using these long hours and this hard work, some of them just to make their channels interesting, but other people have a pure heart in doing it and they contact me 
then some people will come and listen to every word I say and literally take the transcript of the part that interests them and then go and put it on their blog and put their name on it, celestial and so-and-so, as if we did the work together. The hubris, the pride of this generation is so massive that it just leaves me blank and breathless at times. It's like there is no line, nothing is off limits to even adults to know better. If you use the video, you put the name of the channel there and you make sure that you put the link to the original video there and the link to the channel at least. Link it so that people can know it's not your video, it's not your work, it's not your sacrifice. I don't see anyone else here with me bearing this. So it's not a group effort. And I'm not asking for it to be. You can at least have courtesy, please. If you're using the video on TikTok, Instagram, you are welcome. Simply tag me because I know those are short form platforms and you can't possibly upload the entire video. Tag me and put the channel name there so that people know where you got it from. That is all I ask and it's not too much to ask. So I will leave it there. Thank you for being with me. God bless you. I would like to say thank you to those who support the blog. As I've said many times, the days of personal thank yous are long past. If you can see that I've been gone for sometimes nine days, 10 days, it means that time is no longer as it was with me. I'm doing the very best that I can. Thank you so much. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord return all that you have to you. You are under no compulsion. Please don't anyone feel guilty. Um, there's nothing like that. The sacrifice that I'm making, when I was young, God told me about it. When I was young, God prepared me for it. He didn't tell me it was a job. It is a calling. I am shaped for it. And I'm doing it willingly. But I must say that the most piercing burden that I do, that I deal with, is people. In the same way that the ones that put a smile on my face, when I see a testimony, when I see someone say, my child and I are no longer in sin. We are finally free, me and my son, me and my wife. It's changed our life. The same way that people put a smile in my heart with their testimonies, it is also people that grieve me so much in this field. And that is why God told me, do not care either way. Praise or hatred, do not care. Keep your eyes on me and follow me where I am going. And absolutely one million percent, until the last prophecy is made and until the last one is finished, I will be here watching over the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. God bless you. And until I see you again, goodbye.